armed self-defense. It's a topic riddled with myth and misunderstanding. One-off anecdotes and extreme edge cases often drive new preppers and even longtime gun owners to set misguided priorities for self-defense equipment and training. Who can blame them? Movies and video games pump us full of fantastical ideas about gunfights. Gun salesmen work our insecurities to upsell us on more expensive models. Wannabe soldiers and cops get confused about the mission of the self-defender, and their loud, unyielding opinions stoke the infamous internet herd mentality. What's missing is real data. Several years back, Claude Warner analyzed 482 successful defensive gun use incidents as reported over five years in the NRA column, The Armed Citizen. He wanted to cut through the BS to see if there are any trends with the folks who got this rare life and death situation right. Now some say the data from his analysis is too old to be relevant. They don't know what they're talking about. You see, Warner didn't stop at 482. His growing database now has over 5,000 entries. If you look at his blog posts on recent shootings, you'll see things haven't changed, and the conclusions he came to with his original report have only grown more solid. Warner's not just some random numbers nerd. He's retired Army with 10 years in special operations. He was chief instructor at the elite Roger Shooting School. He's got a master classification on four weapon types with the International Defensive Pistol Association, and he is currently an NRA certified weapons instructor. This guy knows his stuff. All his incidents involved private citizens acting in self-defense or the defense of others. Most incidents took place in the home. The next most likely place was a business, then public places, then in or around vehicles. Importantly, shots were fired by defenders in only 72% of Warner's incidents. That means a whopping 28% of the time, the defender was able to defuse the situation by merely drawing their weapon and verbally challenging the criminal. This brings up the first of several misplaced training priorities. Even though a positive resolution with no shots fired is by far the best and most desired outcome, Few gun owners or even firearms instructors ever think to drill on the skills needed to do this right. It may sound like a no-brainer, but when the adrenaline is pumping and you don't have a plan, things can go south quickly. Screwing this up can get you shot, get you disarmed, or land you in serious legal hot water. Now, the weapons deployed. Warner's successful defenders primarily used handguns. They wounded attackers in 29% of incidents and killed at least one assailant in an additional 34%. Smaller caliber guns, that's the 380s and below, scored a surprising 30% one-shot instant kills. In fact, smaller caliber guns were used successfully about a quarter of the time. The 35 caliber family was the most common size deployed. This includes 9mm, 38s, and 357 magnums. The least common size used were the big boys. Altogether, 85% of successful defenders use something smaller than a 40 caliber. This shatters the myth that a big bore gun is required to effectively defend yourself. It's far more important to have a weapon you are likely to carry and are comfortable shooting. Next, engagement distance. The science of proxemics defines different zones of human interaction. Warner says that shootings and gunfights involving private citizens almost universally occur in social space. That's 4 to 12 feet. Most defenders will make the decision to shoot shortly before the criminal comes within arm's length. This bust long-standing miss related to target practice at the shooting range. The traditional shooting distances and aiming stances may be important for law enforcement officers, but they bear little relation to the real-world shooting tasks citizen defenders actually have to perform. The mission of police and military shooters requires them to fully subdue their targets. Citizen defenders have a much easier mission. They only have to survive the encounter. Now let's look at weapon carry. Only 20% of the time did defenders have their weapons on their bodies when the incident started. 
The other 80% of the time, they had to retrieve their weapon from some place of storage. Here's how retrieving from storage versus weapon carried on body breaks out by location for successful defenders. Just look at the numbers for home defense. Self-defense incidents rarely occurred in quarter-second intervals, or what the pros call reaction time. Most commonly, criminals performed a monkey dance, slowly circling their intended victims and communicating with them without attacking. This went on long enough that defenders often even had time to access weapons that were stored in other rooms. This highlights some equipment and skills that would-be defenders often failed to prioritize. Most everyday citizens understand that always and everywhere concealed carry is not practical or desirable. It is possible and wise to train around that truth. Preppers often worry about multiple attackers, especially bands of raiders coming to their home during SHTF conditions. Warner provides some insights here too. 36% of his incidents involved multiple conspirators. In these cases, the most common group was a two-man action team. If there was a third man, he was typically the driver of a getaway vehicle. There seemed to be no cases in which the driver acted as a reinforcement once the shooting started. If there was a fourth man, he was most often stationed outside as a lookout. The outside actors did not appear to be armed. At the sound of gunfire, immediate flight was the most common response for drivers and lookouts. The largest group in the study was a gang of seven. This is the prepper's band of raiders scenario. In that case, an alert and prepared homeowner saw the bad guys invade an adjacent home and accessed his shotgun. When they broke in his door, he killed two and wounded one. The rest promptly fled the scene. Remember, armed bandits are looking for victims. What they are not looking for is a fight. Warner's analysis found that dying from wounds or immediately fleeing were the criminal's two most common responses to being shot. Upon the criminal's flight, the defenders frequently chased and captured the criminals and held them for authorities. Not training on this can also lead to real trouble for self-defenders. Now for one of the most interesting data points of the study, the number of shots fired. The average number of shots successful defenders fired was just 2.2. And the mode, or the most common number of shots, was 1. This destroys two myths. First, that you need a large stockpile of ammunition for self-defense. And second, a high-capacity magazine is essential for a self-defense gun. When more than two shots were fired, it generally appeared that the defender's initial response was to fire until empty. Firing until empty is a terrible strategy for self-defenders. First, you should never fire more rounds than are needed to stop the threat. Prosecutors and juries appreciate restraint. Second, you are legally responsible for every bullet that leaves the barrel of your gun, including any that accidentally hit innocent bystanders. Of the 482 incidents, only three required reloading. This busts the myth that carrying multiple magazines and speed reloading drills are a priority for effective self-defense. Remember, the mission, needs, and legal status of police and military shooters are very different from those of private citizens. That means the gear and training priorities are going to be very different as well. Warner notes that his analysis of positive outcomes only paints the picture of what successful armed defense incidents look like. He concludes his analysis by saying the potential victim's mindset and situational awareness was far more important than the gear and equipment they used. He offered the following methodology for successful armed self-defense. 1. Be aware. 2. Be willing to fight. 3. Have a weapon accessible. 4. Be familiar enough with the weapon to employ it without fumbling. 5. Communicate to the attacker that resistance will be given. And six, if the attacker does not withdraw, counterattack without hesitation.